Hello everyone, Amy R here with Prairie Paper and in Ink. I'm so excited to finally get a chance to use the Honey Bee Coffee Cup Card Honey Cuts die set. This is a large die. It is 11 inches long by, I'm not even exactly sure how wide it is. At the edge of the cup, it's <laughs> almost three, about three, and a, just over three and a half inches. Very large die. So I used my extended cutting plates and my extended multi-purpose platform to run that through my big shot. And then it cuts out these coffee cups and then there's a score line at the top. So it makes a to-go cup shaped card, which I just love, that will fit in a standard A2 size envelope because it measures three and a half inches by about five and a half inches, which is so much fun. So I used my Canson XL watercolor paper and decided to do two since I could get two um, card shapes out of one of the pieces of watercolor paper. And then to decorate these, I am using the Zen Bouquet stamp set. And I used my anti-static powder tool first on the front of both of these cards. And then I just flipped the large stamp over so it's face up on my work surface and inked it up with Versamark uh, ink, which is clear, sticky, slow drying ink. And then I'm able to get two impressions because this stamp is so large, only a part of it is going to cover the coffee cup here. So I was press the cup onto one side, press the second cup onto the other side. So I get two impressions from one version of inking so I don't have to re-ink the stamp or anything. And I'm coating both with some white embossing powder and then I'm going to melt them both um, back to back here. So I'm going to use my heat tool, let that warm up for a few seconds before I start, and then I'm going to melt all of this embossing powder with my heat tool. So really, really simple, and it just gives it this extra something. And I really like the weight too of using the watercolor card or watercolor cardstock for these because it's a hundred. I think it's a hundred and forty pound weight. The Canson XL. Actually, I have it sitting right here. Yes, hundred and forty pound weight. So I had it with the texture textured side facing up, but with the Canson XL. It to me, it honestly doesn't matter very much. Um, it's a very light texture and it's stamped perfectly just doing it like that. So I have my tonic craft mat here. It's got a silicone backing to it, so it kind of stays in place and doesn't slide around. And decided to do one at a time with these instead of both at the same time, just to give me a little more wiggle room. And I'm doing basically faux watercolor. I've done this in a few videos on my channel and all it involves is me rubbing some Distress ink pads directly onto this paper right over the heat embossing and then spraying it with water. And I love how these inks react with water and how they move and blend into each other. With this one, I couldn't resist touching it a little bit with my finger just to move some of the color into some of the areas where there was no color at all. Because the heat embossing is raised, it kind of keeps the color from going all over the place, which is part of the point. And then the areas where there isn't heat embossing, it just can kind of spread out and do its thing, which I just love. So I'm also experimenting this time in letting these air dry. Anyone who knows me knows I am insanely impatient. <laughs> and I usually speed up the drying process with my heat tool. But I'm trying more often now to let things air dry and kind of do their thing, you know, kind of let, let nature take its course. Because you do get a different look. So I set the first piece aside to air dry and I'm doing the second piece here and I did a slightly different color combo on the second one and same thing. I'm just rubbing the edges and the corners of the ink pad directly onto the paper. Once I was happy with how much color I had added, I'm going to spray this quite heavily with water and I it, it was hard. I resisted touching this one. <laughs> I almost did, <laughs> but I decided to just leave it and let it do its thing. And it's amazing how completely different it looks from when it's wet to when it's dry. So I have the, both of these, I just set them aside where I couldn't get at them and let them dry. And then I die cut all of the coordinating pieces with that same coffee cup die set. So there's a circle die in the set. So I die cut those from some green cardstock and uh, treated them with my anti-static powder tool. And then I stamped the little individual flower and leaf image from the Zen Bouquet set with the Versamark ink, coated with the white embossing powder, and then melted that with my heat tool. So once I had both of those done, I'm going to set them aside and I'm going to work on the coffee cup sleeves. So I die cut doubles from some natural cardstock from my stash and had reinforced the little tabs on the sides by just folding them and pressing them down with my Teflon bone folder. And then I'm going to adhere them together with my Tonic Nouveau adhesive. I do the first tab flat, I just find that the easiest. 
have them adhered and then I can fold these over and together and then I can apply the adhesive to the second little tab here and then press them closed so that everything, the corners kind of line up straight. Now you can stamp these or decorate them or whatever and then adhere them. I prefer just putting them together and then stamping them. I don't have a problem with that. I also find this easier because knowing my luck, I would stamp them, then go to adhere them. The ink wouldn't be dry. I'd smear it everywhere, make a mess and have to redo it, which I hate. I hate redoing. So I put mine together and then I'm just stamping them with some of the leaf images from the Zen Bouquet set and I'm inking them up with that same green distress ink I used to do my little faux watercoloring. So this is mowed lawn distress ink. And I'm just stamping the leaves kind of around the perimeter of the front of these. I didn't bother decorating the back it was enough to do the fronts of these, but you could totally you know, carry the design around to the back as well. But eh. anyway, <laughs> the sentiments are from the Perfect Blend stamp set. This is one of my absolute favorite sentiment sets because one, it's coffee themed and two, Honeybee makes some of the best sentiment sets. They're just, they're huge and they give you so many options to build your own sentiments. So that's what I did with both of them. The first one I stamped the, the sentiment separately because it had that scripty coffee word that I love. I love the font of that one. This one I built all together and then I'm inking about all at once with the Versify and Onyx Black ink and then stamping it onto the coffee sleeve. So it says, um, coffee and friends make the perfect blend. That's what I love about their sentiments. So many of them have the straight edges so you can build them all and stamp them all at once. So by this point, my watercoloring is dry and it's just gorgeous. I just love how it turned out. I still had to add some splatter to it because that's just what I do. So I had already sprayed this water. This is the Prima metallic watercolor pans and I'd already sprayed the gold with some water and let it sit for a minute before working it up with my watercolor brush and then I just put some on an acrylic block and then flick the brush against the edge of the acrylic block to splatter that onto these coffee cup cards and I used every bit of that gold splatter. And if I had more of my blocks, I would have used all of it. I can't help myself. I love splatter. And anything shimmery, I'm like a magpie. So added the gold splatter. Gonna let that dry. And I pulled out the large Zen Bouquet stamp again. Put it face up again onto my desktop here. And I'm just inking it up with some light purple ink. So that I can stamp these onto the insides of these coffee cards. Just to give it a little extra something. So I chose the light purple because I'd used some purple on the fronts of these and I'm doing the exact same thing. I'm going to ink up the stamp all at once and then I'm going to stamp the one inside on from the one side of the stamp and the other inside of the card on the other side of the stamp so I don't have to re-ink the stamp at all and it just kind of gives it a little extra something without too much because most of this is going to get covered up by the gift cards I'm going to include but the gift cards obviously will get removed, so it just kind of gives it that little extra. So I have a sentiment as well from the Perfect Blend set, a hug in a mug, <clears throat> sorry, a hug in a mug for you. I stamped that near the top of the inside of the card because like I said, I'm going to add um, the gift cards, so that's going to kind of cover up the rest of it. And then the lids of these cards, I die cut from some glossy white cardstock. I happen to have some in my stash and that was just perfect. Black cardstock would look really nice too. It would pop really nicely. And if you wanted to go the extra effort, you could, you know, coat it with some glossy accents, whatever. But thankfully I had glossy cardstock in my stash. So it just saved me from having to sit and wait for glossy accents to dry. It was enough that I let the watercolor air dry. I deserve a gold star for that. <laughs> So I'm going to adhere all these together and then the coffee sleeves just slip on and that's what holds the cup closed. I love it. This to me, this is my type of interaction. Super, super simple, really little effort required. I don't have to like sit and measure and fiddle. I just got to die cut and stamp and it's done. So these are so much fun. And like I said, they will fit in an A2 standard envelope. So I don't have to like make my own envelopes or do anything extra. It's all done for me. That's, that's my type of crafting. So I'm adhering everything together and then I had to slide the sleeves on just to look at them because it's so much fun. But I've got my gift cards here and my gift cards are actually what inspired the color combos for these. And to attach my gift cards, I'm actually just using a little mini glue dot. So it's easy to remove them. It's not gonna wreck the card or anything and it holds the gift card into place. So I just stick a, one mini glue dot on the back of the gift card and then press that into the inside of the card. And then that can just be easily pulled off when the recipient gets it. 
So I did make two more of these just for fun. I did these off camera, but I was just using more images from the Zen Bouquet set. So I did the one by just stamping the leaves from the set in a couple different shades of green. And then the other one, I just stamped the individual flower stamps and did a little bit of masking with different colors of ink and then different sentiments from the Perfect Blend set. And that was it. So thank you guys so much for watching. There will be a link below the video to the blog post with links to all the supplies used and the pictures. So check that out below if you're interested. And I will see you all very soon in another video. Bye!